What's up guys? I wanted to post a video today that some of you might find fairly interesting. One of the challenges that I have had with my thermal camera recently is that I don't like how close range my view is. So I went about making myself my very own military grade thermal telescope. Now, I'll be honest, there is practically no good reason that anybody should have this kind of technology. With maybe one or two exceptions, if you are like a hunting sniper type person that wants to shoot a deer from like five miles away, or you want to try and hunt UAP, and if you don't know what UAP is, Check out Project Galileo or the recent congressional hearings on UAP. So let's go over everything you probably shouldn't learn how to do. The first thing I started off with was a little bit of research. I looked into what metals were reflective in the thermal regime, and I found out that aluminum is actually an extraordinarily good uh, reflective medium. As it turns out, most reflector type telescopes use a first surface mirror made of aluminum. Well, it's actually deposited on there. So I figured I might be able to take advantage of this instead of trying to use thermal optics, which I do have and I did need to get this to work properly, but we have to start somewhere. So I started with a basic telescope and went onto eBay perusing the web, as I normally do for anything scientific or just generally for things I probably shouldn't possess. And I found some zinc selenide lenses that were just about the perfect size to put into some of the optical elements that I already had pre-existing for the telescope. And I tried multiple different lens types, and some of these will be shown here. Now, don't get me wrong, this definitely took some trial and error. You can see just the number of lenses here alone. Each of those were ordered maybe a week or two after the individual ordering of one or the other. So it certainly took me a while to hone this in. And there is a very specific focal length that gives the best results. Starting with some baseline video, uh, let's get a look at what the surroundings look like normally. And from there, I will show the evolution of the different lenses that were used in the production. And you can see, as I started off at first, the quality was absolute crap and did not give me what I was trying to achieve. After that, I found a better focal length that I at least had some decent resolution and was able to determine heat. So the difficult part of working with thermal is that the wavelength is so long that you actually lose resolution the farther zoom you get zoomed in. Now, I don't know about you, but if you have ever seen those videos from the police helicopters that are tracking cars at night, this is super cool to me, and I wanted to include it. The next clip is of a radio tower, a uh, cell phone tower that is, and you can actually see the emitters giving off heat, and this is with like version 2 of, of the setup. Now I know it's not super easy to tell from a YouTube video, but that cell phone tower is probably about 3 or 4 miles away, just to give an example of what the actual zoom is. I think in this specific video, it was probably about 40 or 50 times, which is fairly exceptional as far as thermal goes. Surprisingly, I was actually able to detect a leak in someone's wall from a little over six miles away. So I don't know if this has any business applications, but if you take away the creepy factor, that's actually pretty impressive. Ah, ah, ah. Okay, in all seriousness now though, um, this last clip is the best quality one that I was able to achieve after playing with focal lengths for far too long. 
And while the distance is not nearly as far as it was in the previous videos, the resolution as well as the thermal pickup capability of the camera made this kind of like the happy balance or medium as far as having zoom, having resolution, and having the ability to pick up heat from a good distance away. So I was the most happy with this, and I still need to get out there and do a couple of other tests to see how far it really can see compared to some of the others. And that is all for this video. Uh, please like, comment, subscribe. Subscribing allows me to get more views, so please help me out with that because if I can make some income on YouTube, I can afford better experiments.